Hello. So today I want to discuss about a problem that appeared in CMI entrance exam 2013. It's a problem involving polynomials and it's a really interesting one. At the end of this video, I'll give a similar type of problem. You should try that on your own. And once you have found out a solution, you can type your solution in the comment box. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. So now let's begin. A polynomial fx with real coefficient is said to be a sum of squares if we can write fx equal to p1 of x whole square plus up to pk of x whole square where p1 up to pk are polynomials with real coefficient. So like I can write f as sum of squares of polynomials with real coefficients. So I need to check this true false statements. If a polynomial is sum of square then whether the coefficient of every odd power of x in f must be 0 or not. A polynomial, a quadratic polynomial, fx equal to x square plus px plus q has non-real roots, then whether f is sum of squares or not. A monic cubic polynomial has a non-real root, then whether it is a sum of squares or not. In the polynomial, f is greater than 0 for all real value of, of x, then whether it is sum of squares or not. So, let's begin. For the first part, you can easily get that it's not true because, like, you can take to be just for example, you can take f to be x plus 1 whole square, just x square plus 2x plus 1, and here, here my odd degree term is x and its coefficient is not 0. Like, you can take a lot of like x square plus x plus 1 whole square, like, a lot of examples possible. Here is also coefficient of x is 2 when that is not 0. So part A is false. Now for part B, let's try to write it as a sum of squares. Let's try to complete the square because quadratic polynomial so you can easily complete the squares. So for part B, fx equal to x square plus px plus q. x square plus 2 into x into p by 2 plus p square by 4 plus q minus p square by 4 that is x plus p by 2 whole square plus 4q minus p square by 4 now see as f has a non-real root so the discriminant of the quadratic equation is negative so 4 so p square minus 4q is negative it must be negative as it has an imaginary root. So 4q minus p square is positive. And that's important. Why? So I can write it as root over 4q minus p square by 2 whole square. And the expression inside the whole square it is just a real number because as 4q minus p square is positive, so its square roots exist in, inside real numbers. So I can write it as just fx to be x plus p by 2 whole square. A polynomial whole square plus a constant polynomial whole square. Sorry, minus p square by its whole square. So part b is true. Now part c is really false. You can guess because as it's a cubic polynomial, if you tend your x limit to be plus minus infinity and its leading coefficient is x cubed plus x cubed. So its lazing coefficient has positive term, so at infinity it goes to infinity and at minus infinity it goes to minus infinity. And in between it can be anything like this, we don't care about that. But any odd degree polynomial has at least one real root. And it goes to, and if you take to plus minus infinity, it, it has opposite signs. Like at plus infinity if it is infinity, then at minus infinity it should be minus infinity and vice versa. So see, if a polynomial is sum of squares, it should give positive value at every real number. But for x tends to minus infinity, fx goes to minus infinity. That's a clear contradiction. 
and by the similar argument you can say that no odd degree polynomial can be sum of squares right because any odd degree polynomial if you take x tends to minus infinity it goes to minus infinity if the leading coefficient is positive or it goes or for if the leading coefficient is negative then for x goes to plus infinity it goes to minus infinity in either cases if you make your r like mod x to be very large in either of the direction in at least one direction of a plus infinity or minus infinity it should go to minus infinity so any cubic any odd degree polynomial it can never be positive all the time so any odd degree polynomial doesn't work so no odd degree polynomial is a sum of squares no odd degree polynomial is sum of squares now let's think about the part d we know that if it is sum of squares then f should be greater than zero for all real values of x now we need to see whether the converse true is true or not it turns out to be true why as we have fx greater than zero for all real number six, that means if s no like if s all complex roots and the pair complex roots and if real roots exists. then the multiplicity is even like if doesn't change sign at x where it becomes zero because odd multiplicity means if s f changes sign there so i can write f as say it has r real roots and s complex roots in either way if degree of f cannot be odd so degree of f must be even so s should be even so s say s is 2k now r real roots say fx a times x minus a1 whole to the power sum 2 alpha 1 because all these things should be even up to x minus a r whole to the power 2 alpha r this is the all factors from the real part and the rest is complex part and we know that for real polynomials any complex root and its conjugates they are all simultaneous roots so we can pair so we have 2k many complex roots so we can pair them up so say complex say my complex roots are z1 up to zr then we also zk then we also know that z1 bar up to zk bar also roots so x minus z1 i can pair them in this way x minus z1 bar x minus z2 x minus z2 bar up to dot 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 x minus zk into x minus zk bar and each of now see the pink part that is the real part i can write it as a is okay and a is positive we know that because if it is negative then f should go to minus infinity at x tends to infinity and that would be a contradiction so a is also positive so i can write it as root a into x minus a1 whole to the power alpha 1 up to x minus ar whole to the power alpha r this total polynomial whole square into the other parts so i so to simplify we just write fx to be a real polynomial pfx whole square that gives me real loops and the other parts now see the other factors are of the form x minus z into x minus z bar so they are of the form x square minus z plus z bar times x plus mod z whole square and this is of the form x square plus px plus q where pq are real numbers and it has complex roots so these are just so these factors are just quadratic polynomials in the case of part b and that's important and we know that any such polynomial is sum of squares from part b 
So I can write this factor as a sum of squares. Now we know that fx equal to p of x whole square into x minus z1 x minus z1 bar up to x minus z k into x minus z k bar. Now these are all cases from part B. All of these complex factors they are cases of part B. Part B. So we can write them as sum of squares. So fx is of the form px whole square into f sum of polynomial squares pi x whole square into some summation like see like multiplying and summation of pol square of polynomials it will give me a, as an end by multiplying all like by multiplying and adding all like simplifying all these things like ui x whole square c you will get just sum of squares of some polynomials. I like will get some polynomials like r1 x whole square plus up to dot 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 r m x whole square. Like you can see that all the polynomials are square of polynomials and they are, they are adding and multiplying them. So the resultant thing will be also sum of sum of squares of polynomials. So we can write f as sum of squares of polynomials. So f is a sum of squares. So the main idea was to as f is a real polynomial, so con complex roots come is, come in conjugate pairs. So I'll just pair the conjugates with each each complex root and they reduced it to the case of part B. This was the main idea. So part D is true. As promised, I'll give an another question. So the question is fx is a polynomial with complex coefficients. Prove that f is an even polynomial if and only if there exists another polynomial with complex coefficients and with complex coefficients. Such that fx equal to g of x into g of minus x. You can see that if you can write any polynomial as gx into g of minus x, it becomes even. You need to, and this part was easy. Now you need to prove the converse, and that's the main challenging part. That if a polynomial complex polynomial is even, you can write, you can factorize as g of x into g of minus x for some other complex polynomial. Try to prove that on your own. And if you found out your solution, you can try to type your solution in the comment box. And if you are interested in this type of problems, keep yourself updated regularly in the in our chat. There are a lot of interesting problems, you can watch them. Thank you. Chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.